Welcome to Illinois Family Spotlight, a conversation about faith, family, freedom, the state of Illinois, our nation, and conservative action. Here's David Smith and Monty Larrick. Thanks for making Illinois Family Spotlight part of your day. I'm Monty Larrick. The powers that be in state government may not like it, but homeschooling continues to grow in Illinois. Here to talk about that and other issues surrounding home education is Kirk Smith, the executive director of Illinois Christian Home Educators. We met up recently during the organization's annual convention at Olivet Nazarene University in Bourbon A. We're not here to practice football. And uh, Kirk, a new venue this year, why make the change? And how are attendees responding? Well, we wanted to make a shift, Monty, to go just from a, a homeschooling venue to really a family conference. And in all honesty, what we have done here over the last uh, six years that I've been on board with ICHE and really the last 20 years that I've been coming to this event, it's not really a homeschool conference. It is a family life, a marriage renewal, a spiritual renewal conference, all packaged together with some homeschooling supplies to sell. I believe that the family is the building block of a culture, of a foundation for the culture. And if we lose our kids, we're gonna lose this next generation and it's gonna take us a long time to recover from that. So ICHE is really focusing increasingly more on the family unit. Family unit. So this might be a nice place for a family unit to come next year, make plans for it next year. Absolutely. Uh, the reason being, we're having things for uh, all ages, from grandparents to come to maybe watch the kids at uh, the dorm rooms to uh, activities for the kids themselves. But it's a time to get around like-minded people, Monty. That is really at a premium nowadays, especially in this culture. Uh, homeschoolers tend to be uh, politically conservative, morally conservative, and let's face it, there's a lot of onslaught in the media today, a lot of onslaught even from our own state capital that we need to bind together and have like-minded people to reinforce not just one another, but our kids can hear somebody else saying the same thing that we are. Kirk, we've discussed the growth of Christian home education in the past, but I get the sense that parents, Christian parents, are increasingly concerned about the culture surrounding us, the culture surrounding their kids, and they're worried about the culture in their public school system and the spiritual well-being of their children who are attending government schools. Yes, that's a, a definitely a frustration and it's really a difficult situation. Uh, I was a public school teacher, as was my wife, and even with public school teachers, they are struggling because they are at a uh, legal limitation of what they can share, not just biblically, but even morally nowadays, and so it puts them in a vice as well. But I think this is really a, a great thing because God is really challenging Christian parents to make decisions or at least to be intentional about what they're wanting to do, Monty, that if they do send them to public school, they're thinking this thing through. They're understanding the, the, social, the sociological issues at hand, the spiritual issues at hand. And so if they send their kids there, they're making a, a very definite decision to do so. Many Christian parents understand this is getting to be a no-holds-bar environment for our kids. And if they do not make that decision, their kids are going to be increasingly indoctrinated. And it's so subtle. Uh, we'll talk, I'm sure, about one of the bills to have um, compulsory education go down to five years of age. And it's just a reminder that the government is wanting to encroach increasingly upon the family unit. The government has its place. There are some uh, organizations, some Christians who really land blast the government. I am not one of those because God has ordained the jurisdiction of government. The problem comes when the government oversteps its jurisdiction into another area, like family or like church, that's when the problem starts. And so we as Christians need to say to the government, you can't come this far. You can't have our children. Well, uh, state lawmakers want LGBT history to be taught in our public schools, our taxpayer-funded government schools, kindergarten through 12th grade, to graduate, you must be proficient in LGBT history. Is that going to prompt more parents to say, I've had enough, I'm going to send my kids to a Christian school, or we're going to start homeschooling? I would surely hope so. I don't know at what point it will take parents to say, we can go no further than we're going here. But it's just not public school parents, even Christian school parents. It's we in the homeschool community, Monty, because we have to understand the government is encroaching upon our liberties day in and day out. And homeschoolers can't be naive to think that 
these things that are happening in public school will not at some point approach our doorstep. You know, this is when I get uh, very concerned and to a certain degree frustrated with Christians and even Christian pastors because they want to keep this separation of church and state, which is so uh, ridiculous from Thomas Jefferson's original intent. But they've bought into this. This is not our arena. God is over all the culture political, educational, and moral. And we have got to reclaim that because if we don't, even as homeschoolers, we're going to see the public school dictate, influence things in our culture as well. Well, could that LGBT mandate come to home education in Illinois? I think anything is a potential. I don't want to go out and cry wolf. I'm not a scaremonger. This is incredible times that we live in. And we have to understand, we have to be engaged in the cultural battle. And so I think anything is possible. You know, there's a supermajority now in the House and the Senate. There's also a Democratic governor. And we're not talking about party situations. We're talking about moral standings here. And we cannot sit by idly and think things are going to get better on their own because we are in a downward spiral as a culture. I think it's redeemable through the power of Jesus Christ, but we must get involved. We must get engaged in the culture wars. If parents want to make the change toward Christian home education, we're recording this interview in June. They might want to get started now. Absolutely. We have folks here who have kids who are two and three years of age who are not even homeschooling yet, but are coming to get the vision. And you have to understand there's a lot of visions on homeschooling. Some are sectarian, many are non-sectarian. ICHE, Illinois Christian Educators, is basically uh, our goal is to promote the centrality of Jesus Christ and all that we do, knowing that from that, everything else flows. Uh, We share with people that so many folks are worried about their sons getting into Harvard or getting a six-figure job. But if they lose their soul, what does that profit? And in God's economy, there's room for all things, but it's about seeking Him first. And so the first place I would encourage people to go to would be to our website at www.iche.org. There's a lot of articles out there on how to get started, uh, the legal ramifications of it. Uh, Each week I do a Take 5 video, just very practical, biblical thoughts about homeschooling, uh, not just Uh, in the educational pursuits, but as parents, things we need to prepare our kids for in the 21st century. So folks could go to ICHE.org and get kind of a step-by-step approach of what they need to do to begin homeschooling, right? That's right. A lot of folks ask, what's our responsibilities legally to the government, to the school? And if you're going in this summer, if you're pulling your kids out before the next school year, uh, you do not have to notify the school districts. Uh, I would. We live in a smaller community, and so everyone knows each other there. Uh, So we would send a nicely written letter. Uh, They can go to our website, and there's a great model letter there just to copy and paste and fill in their kids' name. It'll be an easy thing for them to do. Well, do parents who want to homeschool ever run into hassles when they make that decision from government, from school officials, uh, school administrators, whoever? The potential is definitely there. Uh, homeschooling is coming much more mainstream, but there are still officials, regional superintendents of schools, superintendents of schools who do not understand the law when it comes to homeschooling, and they will tell people they have to register or have to do this or that. They don't have to do that. I don't think it's intentional. I think there's just there's a lot of ignorance even among the school system and the political system. So if parents do run into some hassles from government, officials or school administrators, can ICHE help them get through that? What we do, we encourage all of our uh, members to go and be a part of HSLDA, which is the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. We are not a legal uh, organization, so we really encourage folks to sign up with them. There's a lot of secondary issues that just help. When HSLDA is strong, we're all strong. So we really try to defer all the legal questions to HSLDA. Now, you mentioned compulsory education, uh, lowering the age where kids must attend a government school. Are there any recommendations for uh, when to begin homeschooling for kids? Well, it's interesting you say that, Monty. Uh, Finland is known as the uh, most progressive educational school system in the world. They do not mandate a compulsory education till the age of nine. They don't have their first test till they're 14 years of age, and that's optional, but at 16, they have to have a, a regular test. And here we are in Illinois, and we're going from six, and was proposed down to five. Now, either we know something they don't know, or we're out of the loop, and I think it's the latter. 
parents should know when their kids are ready to go to school or not. There's a white slip in the state of New York to get their kids involved in some type of a pre-K system from birth on. That's very dangerous because the more power you give the government, the more you're obliged to the government. When government pays for something, they control that. And many people, even homeschoolers, don't understand that. They think if they get money from the government, if they get a computer from the government, that's a good thing. Uh, I see share vision to stay out of the government. Why? Because education should not be the government's business. It should be parents' decision what to do with the kids. And anytime we hand that liberty over, other liberties will follow suit. Let's say parents don't have the time to be full-time Christian home educators. Can they do it part-time with the help of ICHE? There are so many different examples of how to homeschool. Uh, some folks do nature studies. Some folks do what we call unschooling, to let the kids kind of pick their agenda. Some have a box curriculum. Monty, home discipleship, home education, the hardest thing about schooling is to get out of our own paradigm, to get out of our own way, because I was a school teacher, I went to public school. We have to understand that when our kids make their own beds, when they help cook dinner, they are being homeschooled in that. And so a lot of things that we would consider not homeschooling really are homeschooling. I know a lot of parents who uh, both work, that might do shift work. There is no end to what you can do. Some kids start as early as six in the morning. Some start at three in the afternoon so dad can be a part of the homeschooling experience. So the reality is this, where there's a will, there is a way. Kirk, what can churches do to assist Christian home educators? And why are a lot of pastors, church leaders, reluctant to get involved? Well, there are several issues there. The first issue is homeschooling. The greatest strength of homeschoolers is they're independent. The greatest weakness of homeschooling is they're very independent. Uh, they can be kind of hard to deal with at times, but usually they take care of their own family. As a pastor for 25 years, it was a joy having homeschoolers in my congregation because by and large, they had a great output, but very little maintenance. And so I would encourage pastors to embrace homeschooling, and also not to see it as a threat. You know, unfortunately, some folks believe that since I'm homeschooling, I'm automatically making a comment. I'm just homeschooling because I believe that Deuteronomy 6 cannot be fulfilled if my kids are gone eight to 10 hours a day through prime time of learning. So my decision to homeschool is not a comment on their decision not to homeschool. So pastors must not be insecure with this issue. But a second uh, principle or a second issue that I think is even more important, Monty, is so many churches are failing to get involved with the culture. God's dominion is over everything including the political realm. Every September when there was a major election, our church held a Meet the Candidates uh, week, and we'd have candidates come in from the national level to the state level to the local level to share five minutes about their beliefs, and then afterwards our people would engage them. We have got to be involved in the culture wars. Uh, I was going to write an article for IFI called Always Late to the Party, because I believe the church is always late to the party. Romans chapter 9, Paul talks about some folks being uh, predestined to salvation, but then it comes behind, the first verse right behind that is, who are you to respond to the potter, O clay? And the point with that is this, Paul anticipated the argument that was coming up. The church doesn't do that, Monty. We just kind of let the culture keep on rolling and rolling and rolling. We've got to start thinking ahead a little bit. We've got to think, where, where's this? what's this trajectory on? Where are we headed to? And we need to make some, uh, some lines in the sand because if we don't, we're going to be relegated to the, to the back porch. I've told pastors often, you know, at one time, if, if the culture was 100%, we had an 80% influence in the culture as the church. Now we have a 15% culture in the church. That's getting smaller, and we're fighting them among ourselves when there's so much to be done in the greater culture. And so it's time for us as pastors to get out from behind the pulpits, to get out in the streets to do what God's called us to do. We need more unity and we need to go on offense. Absolutely. And we cannot be afraid. The Bible says that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I think when we understand that, we begin to rise to the occasion, we'll understand that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And if we take a stand, especially in Springfield, Springfield listens to numbers. We've had several uh, bills come up this spring that affected homeschoolers directly. And homeschoolers, they get out when they have to. We had one bill that there were 4,000 
opposition to 17 for it, and they shut the bill down. I would want to encourage Christians that you've got to be involved at some level. We all can fill out witness slips. We all can make a call to our local senator, to our local representative, or to our governor's office. We can do that. And I, I get weary sometimes, Monty, when people sit back and complain, lament how our culture is going, but they do so little about it. Yes, we need to pray, but there's oftentimes we need to put feet to our prayers as well. And I would encourage Christians, whether you're homeschooling, public schooling, private schooling, it matters not. You've got to be engaged in the political process. Well, you heard it here. That's Kirk Smith, the executive director of Illinois Christian Home Educators. And we'll come back and talk with Kirk a little bit more about dangerous legislation that uh, could impact home education here in Illinois. This is Albert Moeller for townhall.com. A recent article in the New York Times Magazine illustrates for us the quandary of the gender revolution and the breakdown of language. It was a massive essay entitled The Struggles of Rejecting the Gender Binary. The subject of the article wants to be known by the pronouns that are supposedly gender neutral, they and them. So I marked all the confusing personal pronouns that I could discover in this multi-thousand word article. I found at least 171 times where the pronoun simply doesn't make sense. How in the world do you have any kind of language coherence when pronouns become a matter of gender ideology and you have people saying, I am no longer a he or a she, I am a them or a they? What we are seeing is a fundamental breakdown of meaning, and that's seen in a breakdown of language. It's a subversion of truth. There can be no coherence on the other side of such a breakdown. I'm Albert Moeller. Hello, I'm David Smith, the Executive Director of Illinois Family Institute, a state-based Christian pro-life and pro-family public policy organization. I want to invite you to join us as we seek to be salt and light to a dark and rapidly decaying culture. You can do that in a number of ways. For example, you can join our email list to get timely alerts and great cultural commentaries. You can like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, listen to our podcasts, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can attend one or more of the special events and forums we host in different parts of the state. We do all these things to encourage and equip Christians in Illinois. You see, we need you to help us fulfill our mission to boldly bring a biblical perspective to public policy. Our faith requires us to be bold, speak truthfully, and love our neighbors. Join us. Visit IllinoisFamily.org to learn more. Again, that is IllinoisFamily.org. This is Illinois Family Spotlight. Monty Larrick here, joined by Kirk Smith, the Executive Director of Illinois Christian Home Educators. We got together recently during the organization's annual convention at Olivet Nazarene University in Bourbon A. Kirk, yikes! Illinois House Bill 3560 called for home school families to register with our good friends the state and be investigated <laughs> by TCFS. Dangerous legislation tabled for now thanks to a big outcry you mentioned a little earlier from ICHE and the home education community. But the threat is still there. It is there and it will always be there, Monty, because some people believe that it's the state's responsibility to fix things that are not broken. And so it would behoove us as not just Christian homeschoolers, but as Christians to again engage in the culture. Uh, our Facebook usually gets about four to 5,000 hits a day. That Saturday when that legislation was proposed, we had over 45,000. The goal is, or the point is, don't make homeschoolers mad. They're, they're very quiet, they're very unassuming, but if you cross the line, they do not like it. The uh, lady who uh, suggested this bill, I, I don't think she really knew what she was doing. I think one of her constituents just thought it would be a good idea. They had a personal concern. Rather than dealing with that on a one-on-one -on -one basis, they thought they would just throw a blanket over the whole state of Illinois. So I don't think the motivation was ill-tended, but nevertheless, it was an ignorant thing to do. And I don't mean that to be harsh, but what I have seen is people do not understand the law. Uh, a lot of things
things that were said with this bill, even the logistics were not in place to put this. Basically, they wanted to every two years have a visit from the DCFS to help fix homes that weren't fixed. Uh, DCFS has its own problems to fix. The public school has its own problems to fix. Probably need to start there before we start in the homeschooling community. Well, the lawmaker who introduced this bill and supporters say students who experience abuse and neglect can be detected by teachers and administrators in the public school system, but that homeschoolers are flying under the radar when this, these incidents happen. What do you say to that? Well, these are statistical exceptions. I mean, the great statistical exceptions, but what people want to suggest, or the media especially, that these exceptions are the norm and they simply are not. The amount of abuse, assault in the public schools skyrockets compared to home education. So I think we need to start there. If we're worried about our children, we need to start there first. Most people who homeschool, you know, 99%, they do that because they love their kids, they're concerned about their kids, they sacrifice for their kids. So it's just not fair to take one example out of, you know, a million and make that the norm, it's just not the case. You suggested that the lawmaker who introduced this bill had good intentions, but have you considered the possibility that the real intention was to put the squeeze on homeschoolers? Well, I don't know if that was the intention, but that would uh, obviously be the direct, uh, indirect result of that. You can't get away from that. I just don't understand. It's not like our, our state has enough problems already, pragmatically speaking. It doesn't need more stuff to do. You know, we're in a financial mess that's just horrific, and yet we're talking about having DCFS have to hire how many more hundreds, if not thousands, to propose this legislation. It just it just doesn't make sense, Monty. What my take home through this was I realized that a lot of lawmakers simply don't think things through. It's a knee-jerk reaction. We have to have not just lawmakers, we need statesmen and stateswomen to rise the occasion, to rise above the fray of, of all the junk and the pettiness what is best for our state? And if we would get some people in Springfield to do that, this thing can be turned around. I mean, we're headed downhill, especially fiscally on a, a steep curve. Morally, we cannot be fiscally conservative and morally liberal. It just does not work. We have to be conservative both fiscally and morally to have God's blessing on our state. It can be redeemed. There has to be some real choices made in Springfield. Was there some other legislation out there that you fear could be coming down the pipeline, maybe come this fall, maybe in January? Well, we just uh, defeated uh, SB 2075, which introduced the compulsory age that we spoke about in our last segment from six down to five. I think that's going to be coming up. Our lobbyist spoke with one of the uh, sponsors of that bill and mentioned that the goal was eventually get down to three years of age. So I don't know who's they're going, who they're going to hire to change diapers, you know, if that happens. The point is we cannot let up one inch. And it, it bothers me because this is our state. This is not the senator state or the representatives. This is our state as voters. It's our job to get out and especially as Christians to get out and to make a difference. I think there's a lot of pastors, especially I live in southern Illinois, and I think we think this just affects Chicago. They don't understand that eventually, especially with the LBGQ EIEIO that I talk about, I think we don't have a clue how invasive that is going to be. Uh, I work with another organization uh, in North Carolina and so some of these pastors are saying we believe we'll be going to jail in the next three years. That's how serious this thing is rolling at this stage. Oh my. So we need to elect more lawmakers in Springfield who are on the side of Christian home education. Yes, indeed. And I would say even more than that, Monty, it's a matter of men and women who will protect our civil liberties. That's what it boils down to. It's not about whether to homeschool or not to homeschool. We should have the right as voters, as Americans, to make the choice that we want according to the dictates of our heart and not be shoved by the, um, the powers that be, whether to homeschool or not to homeschool, and, and when to start homeschooling, whether that be four. Some of our kids have read fluently at four. Others still struggled at eight. Same household, same soil, same approach. All kids are diff geared differently, and it should be the parents' right and responsibility to make those choices, not the government's. Well, let me ask you this. How difficult is it for Christian parents to be home educators in Illinois compared to other states. Is it more difficult here because of regulations or uh, whatever? Well, we consider this just the grace of God Almighty, Monty. With all that's wrong with Illinois, uh, we've got one of the best 
states uh, in the union to homeschool in. Uh, we believe, again, that's God's grace. All our organization also has worked very, very hard to maintain good relationships with the uh, senators and representatives in Illinois. And while I get very frustrated, they are good to listen and they have been very good. We just say we want to be left alone. We don't want any money. We don't want any perks. We are the only ones that go to Springfield. We give cherry pies once a year. We're the only ones that go there to give something rather than to take. We don't want more money. We don't want more titles. We just want to be left alone to, again, uh, educate our kids according to the dictates of our hearts. You talked about the bill and the massive outcry against it. How did that happen? I think other organizations could learn from you guys. What can you tell us? Well, we work with several organizations. We are part of the Ad Hoc Committee for Legislative Matters here in Illinois. Uh, that includes the House. It includes a Catholic organization as well. Uh, we work with HSLDA a lot also. And between these three organizations working together, we got the word out quickly. Also, we had just some folks who were in district with this one uh, representative who proposed the uh, DCFS intervention. He went and talked to her at a donuts, uh, Dad's and Donuts or something on a Saturday morning, and he just shared, hey, I want you to uh, understand where we're coming from. Had a great conversation, and by that afternoon, between his talk with her and our lobbyist talk, she pulled the bill. She didn't really understand. I tell homeschoolers all the time two things. Number one, stand up for your rights. Number two, be nice. These people, they're trying to do it right. Even those who are different from us with their ideology, I want to respect as a fellow human being made in God's image, but I want to also disagree in love and with reason. What I see, Monty, is a lot of people don't have reasons behind what they uh, believe. You know, Proverbs says, all a fool wants to do is to rant and rave and yell. And I see that happens a lot, especially on the liberal side because they don't have substance to their arguments. I encourage homeschoolers to be informed, to be studied out, to be willing to take a stand, and to be nice for the glory of Jesus Christ. I think we'd be surprised what could happen within our state. Is there something legislatively or whatever that the General Assembly could do for home education or the Trump administration or Congress? Is there something that they could do that would help protect and promote home education. I don't know what it would be, especially in Illinois, because we have freedom. Uh, we do not have to register. We have the rights to, we do have to start our kids by six years of age, according to the law, up to 17 years, according to the law. Uh, those are really the only restrictions we have. Uh, like you said, though, and for your, your listening audience, we have to understand we are on a trajectory here. We can't assume that where we're at today is where we'll be at five years from now. So we always have to stay vigilant in the process. That's why I appreciate IFI, uh, the stands they take, because it just doesn't deal with the uh, branch issues. It deals with the root issues, Monty. I think it was um, Henry David Thoreau. Right. He said, for every thousand hacking at the branches, only one is hacking at the root. And I fear sometimes that we in the Christian community get all caught up in the branch issues and we miss the real root issue, which is we have certain God-given inalienable rights that we need to stand up for. All right. So what is step one to becoming an Illinois Christian home educator? Go to our website at www.ice.org. You can click on new to homeschooling and also legal. It'll walk you through that process and make it a lot easier. All right. Thank you so much. Kirk Smith, the executive director of Illinois Christian Educators, an educator, pastor's heart, and a guy who's taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you need to go to ICHE.org to find out a wealth of information about Illinois Christian home education. That's all in this edition. Please remember to support the work of the Illinois Family Institute. And until next time, God bless. Thank you for listening to Illinois Family Spotlight. For more information, please visit us at ifiaction.org and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. If you would like to email us questions or comments, please do so at feedback at ifiaction.org. Until next time, stay engaged and keep your eyes on the prize.